All right, well, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. Of course, talking about um, Riker and his two day ordeal and how you guys found him. So first, can you kind of just walk me through like the timeline of events leading up to finding him and when you guys first heard about him going missing? Sure. So we were, we were notified at about at 4.53 p.m. on Friday. So we set and immediately sent out uh, deputies and David Thompson search and rescue, our local search and rescue group. They arrived on scene. We're told by the father that he had disappeared approximately two hours before. I don't know how good our timeline was, but we immediately got ground searchers going, um, started requesting air assets. Uh, <clears throat> requested two bear air out of Kalispell to come up and fly. We requested life flight out of Sandpoint. We requested military helicopters. We just started making those contacts while the ground searchers got moving. Uh, a, a powerful thunderstorm blew in. So uh, two bear air out of Kalispell launched, but they weren't able to, to make it into the valley no other air asset could make it into the valley. So uh, Flathead County Search and Rest, or Flathead County Sheriff's Office sent over a drone. We continued our ground search, <clears throat> first with the, the house and the, and the area around the house. And then we expanded uh -huh. to the neighbor's houses while our mountain rescue personnel pushed out into the, into the woods. The uh, thunderstorm hit, no air assets available other than the drone. We searched with the drone, searched with ground crews until we basically exhausted all efforts on Friday night. Regrouped, came back out at five, five o'clock Saturday morning, uh, regrouped the ground searchers, still requesting air assets, still trying to get that in play. Um, we also put boats on the water. We put a boat on the water Friday, Friday night until the thunderstorm got too severe. Um, we were requ requesting dog teams. We ended up with the dog team on Friday, but they returned on Saturday. We had ended up with five search dogs on the ground on Saturday, along with a pretty good amount of ground searchers. And we got a drone out of Spokane Police Department, and the drone came back from Flathead County Sheriff's Office. We were finally Saturday afternoon able to get two military hel helicopters in from the Montana Air National Guard. So they came in, searched one search period, had to refuel, came back out, got weathered out after about a half hour on scene again. So we lost that air asset at that time. Kept expanding our, our ground search area. Saturday came and went, um, it rained all day was low clouds all day. We uh, finally exhausted our search efforts on Saturday night, regrouped again, came out on Sunday morning. We had a, a large group of searchers volunteer from Sanders County, a church group, all experienced mountain outdoorsmen, uh, cat hunters. They, they brought with them their, uh, their hounds. So we were able to utilize, we put hounds out both Friday night, or, or all three days actually. We put local hounds out Friday and Saturday, and then we put more hounds out on Sunday because we'd heard that there were mountain lions in the area and there were bears in the area. Sat or Sunday, uh, everybody, the, the groups rotated back in for lunch and to take a quick break. <clears throat> everybody went back out. Myself and my, uh, Patrol captain were in at the incident command area, which was in set up in the yard of the house. A young man drove up to our checkpoint at the IC. And as soon as he got out of the car, I could tell that he was he, he looked a little frantic. He looked a little shook. So made contact with him. He turned his phone around to me and showed me a picture of little Riker on his phone. I asked him when that picture was taken. And he said, just now at my cabin. So he led us back to the cabin, um, <clears throat> opened the door, and here's little Riker sitting inside. But the, uh, 
the reason that I think Riker was able to survive the weekend was there was a an open shed out back behind the cabin. Everything was locked up at the cabin, but there was an open shed out back. And inside of the shed, there was a grass catcher bag for a push lawnmower. That's where Riker was found. He was basically found inside of that grass catcher bag, using it like a sleeping bag. And when you said, like, when you guys were doing the search efforts on the weekend, um, there's, of course, like a lot of weather going through. And when you said that you exhausted it, exhausted your search efforts for those days, like what's kind of the morale at that point after those long days of um, searching for him? The morale Friday night was still still excitement because it was still a pretty fresh search. We kept we kept people out in the search area as, as much as we could throughout Friday night. Um, by the end of Saturday, everybody was getting, starting to get the feeling that this may turn from, from rescue to recovery at any time. Sunday, when everybody broke for lunch, the feeling was pretty down. Everybody was starting to get a little bit exhausted, a little bit to the point that we're probably not going to find Riker alive. So when when that young man rolled in with the picture of Riker on his phone and said, I just took this at our cabin. I yelled to the search uh, personnel that were there. I said, I think we got him. We jumped in our trucks, drove to the cabin, and there he was. Well, it's, that must be quite a feeling when someone brings that picture over to you guys. Um, and how do you think that Riker at just three years old was able to get so far into the woods so quickly? Well, I. I really think that he uh, that he just just kept wandering. He the the trail system behind their house. I think all of the kids are fairly familiar with, and they and they probably go up there with dad. They go up there with with the other kids. So I think he was pretty familiar with that area. Um, he just rather than turning around and coming back to the house, he just continued down down the path. From what his mother told me, um, Riker's really into insects. He'll chase butterflies and those kinds of things. And one of the clues that we saw on the trails were a bunch of small rocks that have been turned over. Like, like he had been looking for insects. And I think he just got distracted and just continued. And then when the weather started to move in, I think he got scared and took shelter in the shed. And... When he was in the shed, did, has the couple kind of described like how they were able to even um, find him in the shed? Like, what was that scenario like? So well, yeah, um, the couple the couple had kind of heard that there was a missing child down in the the South Lincoln County area. They didn't specifically come to their cabin to help search for the boy or, or look around. They uh, they came to the cabin to clean it up for the spring so that they can use it during the summer. They arrived at the cabin and, and unlocked it, unloaded their cleaning supplies, and the cabin's off grid. So they went out back to start the generator and they heard a whimper from the shed. It, it, Riker didn't call out to them, but I'm sure Riker heard them moving around and they heard kind of a whimper from the shed. So they went to investigate. And as soon as they walked into the shed, they saw little Riker's head poking out of that grass catcher bag. Wow. And was Riker like scared at that point or was he kind of just like, how was his like, like, what was he feeling when he was being found? <laughs> you know, did you see the picture of him that was online? Yes, his, I did. <laughs> his eyes were about that big around. So Riker, Riker appeared to me very, very frightened. And, and he didn't know the couple that found him. He didn't know myself or my patrol captain who were there next. So I'm sure being around strangers, being out in, the, out in that shed for two days and then being, being around strangers, he was, uh, he was pretty shook up still, kind of in shock. As soon as I mentioned, do you want to go see mom and dad? His eyes kind of lit up and he relaxed a little bit. But he was still, he'd been out there for two days, no water, no food and all by himself. Wow. And were you there when he was reunited with his family? And what was that like if you were? Yes, I was there. Um, 
his his family was was very emotional, very shook up, of course. I mean, after two days, they had to have been thinking, are we ever gonna see him again? Are we ever gonna see him alive for sure? But it was it was a very emotional time. We had 53 ground searchers present at the time that that Riker was brought back to the house. And just the feeling among among the searchers and among the entire family, because his grandparents were there, his siblings were there, the entire feeling was just elation and relief. And how is Riker doing now? Have you um, talked to his parents or spoken with Riker? Riker Riker's doing good. I haven't I haven't talked to him personally since then. But he, uh, he spent one night in the hospital just because he was dehydrated. And they wanted, they wanted to check him out and make sure that he didn't have any, any physical problems from being out for two nights. But he was released early, early Monday morning. And he's doing great. He's doing great. He's back to normal and back to playing with his siblings. That's awesome. It's quite a, an ordeal of a weekend, but obviously a good ending. Um, what do you make of the, the whole weekend and all the mix of emotions that was going on? Uh, it, it was definitely a roller coaster of emotions for myself, for the entire search party. <clears throat> because like I said, it, as the day wore on and, and we got closer and closer to darkness, everybody knew that searching was gonna be highly ineffective at night. Even though we continued to try, it, it's just, uh, Every morning they'd start on a fairly high note. Let's go get him. The uh, the energy was up, and by the end of the day, trudging through the forest, um, crawling through the brush, all the all the while, while it was low cloud cover and it was raining steadily the entire time, it, it takes a it takes a toll on people. It takes a toll on searchers and rescuers. Definitely. Well, we thank all of those rescuers that were able to help find Riker and all your guys' hard work. Is there anything else um, from that search, uh, from the searching or anything that you'd want to add that I didn't touch upon or mention? No, the, big, the biggest thing I would like to say is a huge thank you to the community. Huge thank you to all the searchers that were there, all the volunteers that were there. Um, we didn't ask for anything from the community, but every day, all the searchers were well-fed. They had plenty of water, plenty of hot coffee. There were constantly a stream of people stopping and asking if we needed anything for the searchers or for the family. So I just, I, I'm very appreciative of that. Absolutely, as are all of us here, I'm sure everyone in that community too. Um, well, thank you so much for joining me and talking about this. I uh, appreciate you taking the time. You bet, thank you, Sierra. Great, well, have a good rest of your Thursday. I will do that, thank you. Take thank care. you. Bye.